Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest VI with a Sound Canvas. Last time, we got through the catacombs, and then we went to see the Oracle, and she told us uh, quite a few things. And in the end, Ali? we got a new island on the map, so let's go check it out. Alexander feels a str Very misty. From the northeast come the sounds of mysterious drums and chanting. Alexander is standing on the beach of a shrouded island. From here, two paths lead into the island, one to the northwest and one to the northeast. Weird gnarled trees and rolling mists add to the island's eerie atmosphere. Hmm. Well, uh, let's save. This could be hazardous. Let's go check out those drums to the northeast, even though it looks like north. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. Brothers, look! Uh-oh. Alexander's been seen. This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. And the cage is swung out over the bonfire. Alexander starts to feel a little warm. Yeah, this is not good, is it? The warm. bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. Alexander is getting really hot. No kidding. Mercifully, Alexander passes out from the heat before the first tongues of flame ignite the wicker. That was a bit too hot to handle. Alexander should have been better prepared. Yeah. Well, actually, um, uh, we're not even going to deal with the druids this run, so... But we do have to uh, come here for a couple of things. Alexander is standing in a small village. Arranged around him in a circle, are houses built into the hollows of huge trees. In the center of the village is a fire pit. A communal fire pit occupies a place of honor in the center of the little village. The fire pit, naturally enough, contains coal. The coals are cold. That's odd, because Alexander definitely smells the smoke of an open fire close by. Not going to deal with that. Actually, there's only one thing that we need, and it's right here. A wooden-handled scythe hangs against a bearskin on one of the tree houses. Alexander takes the scythe. And with that, we leave. Alex and now... We're going to go back to the Isle of the Beast. Alexander feels a strange pulling. Because now we have everything we need to fully explore this island.
we use the shield uh, for this. Alexander decides to pass through the gate, preparing the shield just in case. The magic arrow completely shatters the shield. Good thing the arrow didn't hit Alexander. A delicate gazebo made of white painted pine and overgrown with rose vines leads north into what appears from here to be a garden. Let's check it out. Alexander walks forward to step onto the gazebo. But the rose hedges on either side of the path, sensing an intruder's presence, reach out their vines and blend together. The path is blocked. Or not. Well, we have what we need to deal with this now. Alexander wields the scythe, determined to get past the magical rose hedges. The leaves fly as Alexander tries to cut the branches faster than they can grow back together. He sees light. He's through. <laughs> Who dares enter Beast Garden? My name is Alexander. I didn't mean to disturb your private garden. No. And yet, monsieur, you could hardly have accidentally broken through the three enchanted traps of the Isle of the Beast. Um, I, I suppose it is simply my nature to break through enchanted traps. <sighs> you must be a prince, then. I know the nature of princes all too well. This face you see before you is hideous, is it not? Well, for the face of a beast, it is really quite noble. I'm glad you like it, for you will soon own one just like it. I too was once a pretty prince, caring for nothing but adventuring and rescuing fair maidens. But I rankled one too many evil hags. One dark night, I was turned into this obscenity you see before you, warped in shape and trapped on this enchanted island over a hundred years ago. Surely there is a way off this island. Oh, surely. You broke in, did you not? And yet think, where would I go clad so eloquently as I am with this silk and this pelt? You see, my prison is also my sanctuary. You are the first to break through the barriers in lo these many years. That is, except for the druids who stole my heirloom coat of arms. Hmm? If there's any way I can help. Help? You? I'm afraid you don't understand. The enchanted barriers were a warning and protection for you more than for me. Your prize for forcing your way past them is to join me in this dire life. By the laws of this sorcery, you are doomed to be trapped in the form of a beast. Your reward for broaching this garden is to be my slave. A slave as beastly as I am. You have only a few hours of humanity left. But that's not possible. There must be some way to break the enchantment. Spells always have a weakness somewhere. The enchantment you are under is tied to my own. Oh, the sorceress left me a way out. But I'm afraid it was only her final bitter joke. You see, I need only find a maiden to join me here, to share my castle, my life, willingly. Take another look at me. You can't help but admire the hag's terrible cruelty and cunning. I shall try to find such a maid, for Cosima's sake. Truly? How determined of you. I personally would not waste my last few hours as a man on an impossible errand. However, you may do as you please. I give you this token. It's my family ring, and the only heirloom I have left. If perchance you should... 
if you think you have found a maid. <sighs> I shall give her this ring. Yes, she must accept it of her own free will. By doing so, she accepts me. Not that you shall find anyone, mind you. Your time is short. Count the minutes on your fingers while your fingers you have, pretty prince. Your master will await you. Well, this is not good. We better save. Also, that bit about, um... About the druids somehow breaking in here. It's kind of hard to believe. Very suspicious. Especially considering that uh, everyone else has been saying the same thing about other islands. But we won't deal with that for a while. Alexander feels a strange sensation come over him. His skin begins to itch. His head throbs. Wee, 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 wee. Was that the beast you could do? <laughs> ah, terrible pun. Alright, so, yeah, that's what happens if you take too long. So, this time, let's go quickly. Alex it actually takes quite a while. Alexander. There's plenty of time. But, of course, if you don't... Uh, if you have no clue what to do, you might be in trouble. But, you know, how could you not have figured it out by now? Good day, mate. My name is Alexander. How do you do? I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. Uh, ah. Yeah, you have to um, grab one Alexander of these. Alexander takes a magnificent white rose from the rose hedges. All right, um, let's try this again. So she won't just talk to us. What we have to do is uh, show her a white rose because she's obviously, uh, she loves roses. So this will get her to open up. There's no reason to use. Um, if I can point it correctly. Pardon me, maid. I hope you don't think me forward, but I see that you like roses. I thought you might, perhaps, like a fresh white rose. Alexander can see the conflict in the girl's pretty face as she fights between her distrust of him and her desire for the white rose. The rose wins. Oh, I shouldn't, sir, but it is so lovely. I've never seen a rose of white. It looks so pale and delicate. Wherever did you find one of such a color? There are many hedges of them on the Isle of the Beast, and they grow together like magic. Oh, truly? What an adventure that must be to see them. But I should not speak so, especially to a stranger. Thank you for the rose, though, kind sir. Well, 
take um, Beast's ring and offer it to her now. Alexander has a thought about the serving girl. He decides to bring up the subject of Beast with her. Let me tell you about the place where the white roses grow. The Isle of the Beast is an enchanted place. There's a path running through a deep forest. The path crosses three magic blockades set to keep all visitors away. At the center lives a tremendous beast. Really? Magic blockades? How exciting! What kind of a beast? Is it very terrifying and ferocious? It is a beast that walks on two legs and dresses like a prince. It speaks with the voice of a man. A beast that talks and wears clothes? How is that possible? Is the beast magic too? Not magical. Enchanted. Beast was once a prince, but a witch trapped him in the form of a beast and set him on the island. There he lives in a castle in the midst of a maze. How terrible! Imagine how lonely he must be. It is a very lonely prospect, isn't it? Oh, I have met him, you see. He is indeed ferocious, but who would not be? He really exists? Oh, how it breaks my heart. If I could, I would tend to such a beast. Such a beast might find comfort in a kind face. Do you not think it's so? Oh, I think it's so. I very much think it's so. You would not be afraid of him? Afraid? Maybe at first. But how silly of me to speak so. The roses in this little yard are the only magic I will ever see. I could take you there. In fact, I would owe you my life if Let you would go. No if kidding. If you truly wish to go. You are serious? I could leave here? Oh, I have always dreamt of leaving. But to actually go... This is the only home I have ever known. Home is a hard place to leave. Even if you're unhappy there. But I will go. If I can help him, I, I must go. Way to spin it, Alexander. <laughs> None of it is really... Is there nothing you wish to take with you? There is... nothing. Then take this ring. It is his. He will be pleased if you would wear it. Why, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen! Thank you kindly, sir. Beauty! Where do you think you're going? To a place where roses grow, and to someone who truly needs me. I see you wear my ring. You willingly agree to spend your life here with me? Do you know what that means? Yes, my lord, I do. I have been touched by your story. Pity alone need not sentence you to endure this face. Oh, but it is a gentle face, and kind. You look at me so sweetly and are not repulsed. Oh, by the light of your eyes, my spirit soars! The enchantment! It is broken! I am pleased to have served you, my lord. Do you still wish me to stay? What? Speak not such nonsense, beauty. Do you think that I learned nothing of true love during my time here? You are my queen. Oh, my clothes! This gown! How well it suits your noble heart. Alexander, how can I ever repay you? I have nothing to offer except my gratitude. But please, take these old clothes. Perhaps you'll find someone in need during your travels. 
You have already repaid me by your example of courage, beauty, and by your friendship, I hope. You will always have our friendship and loyalty, Prince Alexander. But from a fellow adventurer, take some advice. If you find your true love, protect her with your life. Fear all beasts without the redeeming humanity of love. And to aid you, accept my mirror. Now that my life is no longer hung in false shadows, I have no need for it. Give it to someone with nothing to fear from the truth it reveals. Uh-huh, sure, we'll do that. Thank you. I wish you both well. Come, beauty. Let me take you home. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. Uh, next time... Well, um... We're almost done. Except, uh... We'll get a better ending the second time we run through. Uh, so, see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>